But like all sorts of funding, venture capital has taken a hit in this crisis. So will it bounce back next year to drive the next generation of companies? Well, here with us is the legendary venture capitalist Alan Patrickoff. He is one of the early pioneers of VC funding who helped build some of the biggest global companies today. We've got Apple, Office Depot, AOL, Cellular Communications, so some big names behind uh, some of your initial funding efforts. Uh, uh, Alan, I mean, looking at the, you know, we were by this crisis about a year and a half already. Uh, you know, is venture, venture capital funding going to be coming back next year? Well, I think it's, uh, not only is it coming back, I think it's coming back strong. I think what's happened is people have been confused and describing venture capital in such a broad terms that it includes investments from a few hundred thousand dollars to 30, 40, 50, 100 million dollars. Uh, pure venture capital, which is early stage companies, uh, has really never been stronger. I mean, I was at a, a New York Tech meetup about two weeks ago where there were 700 people who were entrepreneurs uh, in this area. The same thing exists in lots of cities around yeah. the country. Uh, I mean, you're, you advocate basically. I mean, what you're saying is that small investments, the big challenge for VCs is that you get to these unwieldy numbers and you get to, you know, three, four hundred million dollar investments. But you're saying that true venture capital funding is very small. We've never had as strong an entrepreneurial uh, set of new business formations in as long as I go back, which is a pretty long way. It's a very exciting time. Well, let me, let me ask you, oh, thanks. Uh, so you mentioned there were 700 guys at there, 700 presenters right. at, at this event. How many people or how many proposals do you look at before you find one that says, wow, this is A lot, good. a lot. I mean, but... 50? Uh, oh, yeah, at least. Wow. I mean, you know, we look at during the year probably six, seven hundred investments opportunities and we may invest a dozen deals. Well, are the, are the pitches changing? And t like, how are they changing or how have they changed? Uh, well, I think it, certainly, let's put it this way, a change from the year 2000, the bubble period, they're much more intelligently presented, they're much more realistic. The, the key word, at least in the area I operate, is capital efficiencies. Companies just don't need that much money. And what happened is we have funds that are so large that they have to make investments that are disproportionate to what the curve has been going down in terms of capital needs. And that's a, a very exciting opportunity for small funds. Alan, when you do find that blockbuster wow business plan, how much money is available? How much money will go to one company? Uh, up to how much? Well, I mean, it depends on what stage you're at. My, at our yeah. stage, we're looking at companies that will require from startup to cash flow break even $5 million or even $10 million at most. Yeah. Uh, we're not looking for the companies, but there are plenty around if you're going to go out to the high-tech, uh, capital-intensive businesses that take a lot more money. Biotech takes a lot more money. Do you find that you're replacing at all other types of funding that might have been available before, that you're getting companies that go to you who may have before gotten loans? or who may have gone to the debt markets or, or whatnot, no, or no? No, I don't think so. What, what we're finding is that there is a big layer now of angel investors who are doing that startup, that garage-type investing that we've heard about, and we come in right after those angels, and we're very happy to have angel networks developing all over, all over the country. I think one thing has changed is the IPO market is not as vibrant and not available to a lot of these young companies for follow-on capital as at early a stage as it used to be, and that's a problem for the growth and expansion type of business uh, capital needs, which encourages people like us to be realistic about what their exit expectations are. And, right, and it can't just be an IPO yes. at the end. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we don't count on IPOs anymore. Okay.